this Pentecost Sunday. Today we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit and the gift of God empowering us to be God's people full of God's power. Just wanted to thank you again for your generosity and being faithful in giving to God's work through First United Methodist Church. We are able to continue to do work of the church through your gifts and we cannot thank you enough. Want to especially thank those who are able to give to the Mission bu Bucket Project. We know the effects of the pandemic are being felt in our economy. Many of the organizations that we support through our Acts 1-8 mission budget are feeling the impact. So if you are able, we hope that you will be faithful in giving to your Acts 1-8 pledge so that we might be faithful in supporting these ministries. And once again, our conference mission offering will be for ministries helping with the opioid crisis in the area of the Holston Annual Conference. With the onset of this pandemic, the opioid crisis has increased in many areas as people are seeking alternative means of coping with their grief and pain. But we can be a part of the solution by helping to fund ministries that will offer them Jesus. So once again, you can earmark a donation with conference mission offering. Then also wanted to let you know that June 7th is the first Sunday in June and that our typical Sunday to celebrate communion. Once again, we will have our separate and set-apart time to celebrate communion on June 7th at 10.30. You will want to go to the church website a few minutes before, scroll almost to the bottom, and then click on the live stream link. Please have your elements ready as well. We look forward to celebrating communion with you on June 7th at 10.30 a.m. So as we begin this time of worship together, let us bow for just a moment of prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, rush over us again as we worship in our homes this day. Come, Holy Spirit, light our hearts on fire to be your missional people in the world. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with your presence and fill us with your peace. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Let us worship. Make it count, be the mark, build a name for yourself. Take your dreams, chase your heart above all else. Make a name, the world will be the universe. With all an empty world, you sell his empty dreams. God lost in the light when it was up to me. Make a name, the world will be the
Our scripture reading from today comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, welcome today to this Pentecost service. And seeing this roaring fire reminds me of an experience I had when our family lived in North Georgia. We had a couple in our church who grew up in Louisiana by the Mississippi River. And one year that couple invited us to their house on Christmas Eve for this big blowout. And we really didn't know what to expect. Well, we had just had a baby, and so Lisa stayed home with our infant son, but I took the other two boys with me. They were probably about two and four. And one of the customs our new friends grew up with for Christmas Eve was to build a teepee-shaped thing out of two or three telephone poles, and then they would fill that teepee up with logs and douse them with kerosene, and there were hundreds of logs in this structure. Well, that night we waited until well after my children's bedtime to get started. And then when it was really dark, our whole host set the whole thing on fire. And I cannot describe to you what an enormous inferno that was. And supposedly this was to help Santa find their house. But all I know is it was the biggest bonfire I'd ever seen. Well, I tend to be a safety conscious person and I knew my wife would not approve of having her babies exposed to something like this. And there was so much that night that could have gone wrong. And I was a nervous wreck and I was thinking, what am I doing here? I shouldn't be here with these children. Lisa is going to kill me. But she wasn't there and our middle son couldn't even talk very well yet. And our oldest son was kind of a blabbermouth, but I swore him to secrecy. And fortunately for me, everything turned out fine. But to be honest, I'd forgotten about that whole extravaganza. And so I started doubting myself. Did I really see that? Did that really happen? And when I was there, it was one of the most spectacular things I'd ever seen. But last week, I wondered, was I losing my mind? Nobody else, when I described this, knew what I was talking about. And I was so grateful to finally find proof of this Louisiana custom on the internet. 
Well, that's not the only time I've doubted myself. For instance, when I experienced the call in the ministry and sensed the Holy Spirit in my room, and it was just as real to me as any of you were, I was on fire for God. And before I went to bed that night, I knew that I wanted to be a city manager. But when I woke up, Lisa told me, uh, or I told Lisa what happened to me in that room in the middle of the night, and I told her I was going to be a minister, and everything that I was doing in my life was about to change. So I dropped out of grad school. Lisa and I packed up and moved to Atlanta. And at the time, this was the most significant move, moment in my life. It was the biggest leap of faith that I'd ever taken. And there are times when I begin to doubt my call and I'm grateful that Lisa was there to remind me of the details. I wonder what's going on in your life when you were most on fire for God. Did it feel like you could live off the energy of that experience forever? Isn't it good when you have somebody that you could share that experience with? Well, the luster of having a powerful religious experience tends to fade. And after a while, our lives don't look and feel much different from anybody else's. And have you ever felt like that your faith has become a dying ember? Some of the people who have lost their jobs and whose businesses are in trouble today because of the coronavirus, they're Christians too. And we wonder, shouldn't they be immune from trouble since they belong to Christ? And hasn't it been disheartening to hear Christians are among those who are dealing with depression and anxiety? And Christians have been dying along with non-Christians over these last couple of months. And sometimes we feel burn up and burn out and we wonder if following Christ was really worth the bother. Well, in the weeks and months after that first Pentecost, the church was on fire. Christians were burning with passion for Jesus. Some were even giving all that they had to the church because they assumed that Jesus was coming back very soon. And they wonder, what do we need our earthly belongings for if heaven isn't far off? And besides, they were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. But then days stretched into weeks and weeks stretched into months and months stretched into years. And one by one, that first generation of Christians began to die off. And those left wondered what it all meant. Some were losing heart. They weren't on fire like they once were. And some of those there on Pentecost wondered, had all that been a dream? Had they really felt the power of the Holy Spirit? Were they really able to understand each other in their own language? Well, to help each other remember is the reason why we have this book. This book is filled with the books like Acts and the Gospels and Paul's letters. And everything in the Bible was written as a witness and a testimony to offer Jesus' followers encouragement. This book was written to remind believers that Jesus did not stay dead and that the Holy Spirit gave the church the power to understand each other at Pentecost. This book is our go-to book when, questions, when we question whether we believe that the Word is still true. And I know that there are challenging things in the Bible, but you can find truth here even in this crazy stories like Pentecost. And we're told that it wasn't just Jews who experienced tongues of fire at Pentecost. The Bible tells us that Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near the Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, they all heard them declaring the wonders of God in their own tongues. And everybody present on that day heard the sound of a violent wind from heaven. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. All were able to speak with different tongues as the Spirit gave them power. They were all filled with tongues of fire. But most days, in fact every day after that day, 
they still had communication problems with one another. Every day after Pentecost, they were probably afraid to admit that they were followers of Christ for fear of persecution. Every day after Pentecost, they were still nagged with doubts. Maybe just like you. And sometimes my guess is that instead of feeling like a roaring fire, they felt like they were dying embers removed from the warmth and the power of the Pentecost fire. And even today, there are times where we need tending of those spiritual flames. Some days we need somebody to remind us that once we were on fire for God, some days it felt like our spirit was roaring inside of us. And one of the things that impresses me about this Pentecost story is that the Holy Spirit came upon so many different people at different places in their spiritual lives. It heartens me to hear that Pentecost just wasn't for the disciples. It wasn't for just those who are already strong in their faith. Pentecost wasn't just for those who needed a faith lift. It wasn't just for the Jews. It wasn't just for the Gentiles. Pentecost was for the whole church. And even if a person wasn't there on that day, they saw evidence of the Holy Spirit breathing new life into the church. The Spirit was reckless. The Spirit didn't discriminate. The Spirit was in charge. The people that were assembled there did not call for it. They hadn't done anything to earn it. They wouldn't have even known how to have asked for this. I'm intrigued by gifts like Pentecost that are more about God than about us. There are other gifts that are filled with wonder like baptism and the Lord's Supper, gifts like grace, gifts like love, gifts like forgiveness that can change a person's life even today just as much as at Pentecost. Even today, we don't know what kind of fire the Spirit is going to unleash when somebody cracks open a Bible. Even today, we can't contain the blaze that overtakes a person when they accept Jesus to be their Savior. And I know that right now we are all in very different spiritual places. Right now the church is filled with some who are burning with the love of Christ and are others who are almost burned out. But for 2,000 years, the Holy Spirit has never let the fire burn completely out of the church. The Spirit has a way of always stoking that fire of putting dying embers next to raging flames. I want to encourage you, don't ever give up believing that God can stoke new life and a new word into the world. And that is what we celebrate today. God's Spirit coming forth on Pentecost Sunday. Thanks be to God. We hope that you will continue to pray for Clay Wilkie and Teresa Prince and their families as they continue to go through treatments and therapies. We also hope that you will add Catherine Stubblefield to your prayer list. She had to have a follow-up procedure recently. Also hope that you will pray for Stephanie Gorgas. She is currently experiencing some medical issues and is going through some testing. We also want to let you know that Betty Tate has had further health complications and we hope that you'll pray for her as well. And finally, just want to let you know that Jean and Joyce Jolly's niece, Erica Gilbert, passed away. And so we want to remember that family in our prayers as well. So now, brothers and sisters, let us pray. We've had a couple of other prayer concerns pop up since we've recorded our worship video. So I wanted to let you know about those in our time of prayer. First, I want to let you know that Jane McCrory Taft has been having some health issues, so we want to remember her, as well as her mother Becky, in our prayers. And then also, Lynn Leach is having some testing done on June 1st, that's this week, so we want to remember her and her family as well. Good morning. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Precious Lord, we approach your almighty throne of mercy and grace with hearts of humility, praise, and thanksgiving. We adore you, Father, in your majesty and purity and holiness and sovereignty. We love you, Lord, and 
as we join our minds and our hearts and focus them upon you, we lift both spoken and unspoken petitions, presenting them in reverent adoration. Oh, Heavenly Father, you have filled this world with immense beauty. Open our eyes to behold your gracious hand in all of your works. And as we rejoice in your whole creation, may we learn to serve you with gladness. O oh, Ancient of Days, we praise you for the love that birthed creation and thank you that we can never exhaust the goodness of your gifts. For we know and we celebrate that every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from you, the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. Dear Lord, this morning we have named several of the many who suffer sickness, confront failing health, and who are broken by pain, discomfort, anxiety, and worry. As the Grand Physician, we pray that you will bring wholeness and healing to body, mind, and spirit. We ask that your healing hand of comfort strength and joy be ever present. We ask that you bring restoration of health through your Spirit's power. Hold them, dear Father, in your loving arms so that they will feel your presence, bringing hope and light in even the darkest of times. Father, during these troubling and uncertain times, we pray for your Holy Church Universal, that we may be guided and protected by your Holy Spirit. May we be led into the way of truth and hold the faith and unity of spirit in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Guide us to embrace and live out the fruit of your Holy Spirit bearing love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And as we live by Your Spirit, let us keep in step with Your Holy Spirit. Almighty and everlasting God, we pray Your special blessings of love upon our pastors and their families our church staff persons and their families. And Father, we pray for one another. We pray for a full measure of wisdom and understanding and discernment. And by Your Holy Spirit, fashion our lives according to the example of Your Son, Christ Jesus, and grant that we may show the power of Your love to all among whom we live. Father, we celebrate today the indwelling of Your Holy Spirit, which You sent upon the believers on the day of Pentecost, and which is our blessing today. Lord, we thank You for the transforming work of Your Holy Spirit in our lives and through our lives toward others. We thank You that You have given us boldness to proclaim the gospel. And just as the outpouring of your Holy Spirit on Pentecost so dramatically changed the lives of the disciples, may the burning fire of your Holy Spirit refine and renew us so that we will never be the same. May we move in the power of your Spirit and may our lives and your ministries be infused with your divine authority. Thy will be done, Father. Dearest Lord, you are eternal. Your Holy Spirit reveals the meaning of your word. You are our helper, and we know that you will teach us all things and bring to remembrance all things that Jesus taught. May all that we say and all that we do please you, dear Father, 
and bring you honor and glory forever. In the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Oh!